This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Ramon Foster, Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryan, and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. The Titans, night one of the NFL draft, select J.C. Latham, a big, big man, an offensive lineman, a tackle out of Alabama, nearly 6'6", 340. Rhett Bryan, his measurables off the charts because he's a man of size off the charts. He absolutely is. And you're talking about a guy that, you know, carries the weight. He doesn't look the weight that he rings in at at 342. So you're talking about an arm of 35 and one-eighths inches, wing of almost 85 inches, and big old bear paws, 11-inch hands. He is a mammoth human being. This is exactly what the Titans needed. I mean, this is exactly what you had to come out of this first round with. I mean, just anything else, when you're looking at it, you know, to, to reset this football team, you had to reset the front of this football team, especially on the offensive side of it. I, I, I am, I, I'm so excited, first of all, that we were able to get him. And second of all, I keep saying this, but this is true, and if you get a chance to come to, to training camp to watch you – know, I went down on the field Wednesday just to watch – Bill Callahan work with the offensive linemen, it's impressive. And it's something that, you know, I wanted to watch and I wanted to see because he has earned the reputation for a developer of talent. And you pair a coach like that with some elite talent, now you've got something working. And here's the other thing, too. Everybody else will come up to that standard. And that's important. We talked about that a little bit. You talked about the numbers that we have there. The guys that have been here get a reset. But to come back up to the standard that uh, this guy will help set, along with – and I, Peter Skaronsky is a wonderful player. And then along with Cushenberry at center, this is going to be – it's going to be a different-looking offensive line pretty quick for the Titans. And, and also this, too, man. I'm, I'm, I'm huge on this. You get a little bit of a tone setter with a guy like him, too. I think you can watch his, his visuals of him getting drafted tonight, and you see he's not shy. He's very outward. He knows he's good. And when you come into a place like this where you have like-minded, younger veterans around you, Peter's a young guy, Cushenberry's a young guy, and so on and so forth, those guys get an opportunity to adapt each other's personality and set a standard for not just that offensive line room. Coach Mack, y'all know this, man. You, most coaches want the leaders of their teams to be the O-line and D-line, right, because they're the biggest. They also got the biggest numbers in the building also. We talked about his 12 quality guys right now and probably more to add after the draft. Him being one of the focus points of this group, to me, it goes so far with where you reset this franchise is standard on what you want to do, too. That's what I like about him, too, with his flexibility playing right or left, depending on how good he gets. He's going to play left. Yeah, and yes. That's, that's what they say. The thought of he and Joe Alt – or I should say the thought of Skaronsky and Joe Alt together for 10 years was a good thought. The thought of Skaronsky and J.C. Latham together for 10 years is a great thought on the left side. That's what they wanted to come away with. They wanted to come away with a foundational piece that's going to be part of what they do for a long time. And that's, that's what they were able to do. How hard will it be to move him from the right side, which he played at Alabama, to the left side, Ramon? I don't think it'll be hard at all. Again, one thing that I was super static to hear him say was, uh, or was told to him, and he confirmed he's dropped over 20 pounds already. That right there was huge. He's reshaped his body. You look at it, the way his suit was cut on him. You didn't see much rolling no. of him. He looked good. He bounced around like the, – the eye test, it matters, right? Like those are the things that you count and say, all right, this guy's about his business. And you hope for his sake and his team's sake it wasn't just a, a one-year, six-month thing. This is for a long time. And you never question his strength. You just question his footwork how he was going to continue to grow, and I think he's going to check those boxes. Okay, Amy Wells, you and I work inside Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, and when, when Rand Carthon was asked on Titans Radio about his visit, his 30 visit, you can bring in 30 players for, for in-person visits. He came here in early April. I asked him what stood out, 
And Rand Carthon said what a culture fit he was. That is a very real thing from not just the coaching staff right now, but also the personnel staff. And this is, as, as we know in talking internally, this was a big part of what they wanted. Absolutely. And you have to think about it. Brian Callahan is creating his team. And part of creating your team is making sure that the, uh, the culture, the identity, everybody is moving in the same moving in the same direction and everybody's on the same page. So part of the evaluation of players is not just, okay, what are you able to do on the field? How is your production? What are your measurements? But it's also, how are you going to fit in this locker room? How are you going to help us build what it is we're trying to create? Because there's a lot of that that goes into the building of a team when you have a new staff. So part of bringing everybody in for the 30 visits was to see how are they going to fit within this world that we are trying to create right now. And Ram was talking about how he's a big kid. He's a lot of fun. He's a guy that you really enjoy being around. And that is something that they want to have. They want guys who want to be in Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. They want guys who want to be playing this game and working hard. The question Red asked about the football character being Exa- a big exactly. part of it. Exactly. And when Rand has talked, and you visit with Rand every week on Titans Radio, when he's talked about football character, he hasn't been joking around about what that is and what that thinks, what he thinks that means. He has cut some very talented guys from the Titans draft board because they don't have, they don't love football enough. He's like, I'm just not interested in putting up with that. He's flat out told us, Mike, it's the number one thing he's looking for in traits before he starts with anything It's almost else. like Dan Hurley with Connecticut basketball. After he wins the national championship, he talked about the same thing. Yeah, and, and what's the first thing that Brian Callahan says this evening is that he loves football. And, you know, that's the thing that has to be checked off the list. So if he's a cultural fit, he loves the game, he is an enormous human being who is super talented. And then I'm just getting excited thinking about the, the man that Rand calls big coach, Bill Callahan, getting to mold this young man and to have him to protect the investment at the quarterback position. And when Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon talk about culture and fit and things like that, Coach Mack, they're not criticizing the Mike Vrabel era. Not at all. In, in terms of no. work ethic and how no. hard guys play and people getting along. It's just when you make a change – some things change, and you have to have people who fit into what you're going to do. Well, it's a reset. And it's a reset. It's a reset. It is exactly what it is. It's a reset. And, you know, we, we talk about Latham, and, and, you know, when Rand said, you know, he's a 21-year-old, he's, he's, you know, he, he's young, he's fun, this guy's also a dog. When you put the tape on, he's a dog. And that's what you got to have up front. I'm sorry. You know, when you look at it, I mean, Ramon's sitting right here next to me. He's a nice guy, but he was a dog. And you've got to be that to play in the offensive line and the defensive line, especially in the National Football League. You've got to have just a little bit of nasty to you. And this guy's got it. And that, to me, is something that that you talk about resetting a mindset for everything that we're going to take this thing over. And, again, I can't say enough about the guy that we've got coaching him, but the, the character thing, that has been very real with Rand Carthon ever since he showed up here. Okay, so let me read you this. J.C. Latham was born in Mississippi, but was largely raised south of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was a left tackle at IMG Academy after starting his career largely in the defensive line at Waukesha Catholic Memorial High School in Waukesha, Wisconsin. He was the number one offensive line recruit in the country, started his last 27 games at right tackle for Alabama, using his 35 and 1 8 inch arms and his 11-inch hands to dominate defenders. Over 856 career run block snaps, he blew his block only 11 times. Wow. So 11 wow. out of over 800, 856. Never more than five times in a season. Crimson Tide coaches had him for 41 knockdown blocks in 13 games. He is nicknamed the Trench King. He is just 21 years old as of February the 8th. Well, I mean, this is, this is what you want. 
And this is what you got to You're have. laughing at the Trench King? I'm laughing because he is the self-proclaimed Trench love King. That. Which I love so much well, more than... Like Malachi Corey calling himself the Yak King, yeah. right? It's so yeah. much better JC than someone is else. TK. He is. Yeah. And, and not only that, when you do that, though, no, hey, to your point, I know where you get uh-huh. into like, all right, all right, you give yourself your own nickname is this, though. You better follow it up. Exactly. And he, and he has. If someone else says it, it's like but he noticed it one time and it kind of stuck. If you give it to yourself – Every single time you've got to deliver on that nickname. Well, yeah, I don't think he loses a lot of fights. Well, I'm just you know? saying. <laughs> that's no. the, that's, I, that's why point. I think it's you so can, great. I mean, let's face it. Big people can do about what they want. You know? I, <laughs> yeah, well, ask Ramon. He yeah. doesn't do what he wants. He just runs <laughs> through us, pushes why, us down. That's when we go on the road. I walk in front first. You so. walk in front. That's, that's that exactly. is parting the sea, sir. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is parting the sea. Okay. The, the overall first round tonight, first 14 picks for the first time in NFL history are offense. Never been a top 10 without a defensive player. That's amazing. At, at, what, do you, what do you throw that to, Coach? Why do you think that happened? Well, first of all, because this, this group of receivers and this – first of all, you had six quarterbacks taken. That's unusual to begin with. So, there's six. There's six out of, out of, the, out of the, the top of the draft. But this group of offensive linemen, we talked about how special they were going to be when you start evaluating them through this drafting process. So, you knew there was going to be an inordinate amount of tackles taken early. And then you had some elite receivers. Some elite receivers. We talked about those were two of the heaviest as far as people. What do we have? We had 18 first-round grades, and the biggest majority were those guys. Now, the the two corners that went, they were a first-round grade for us, but I think it's a result of the type of people that were there, especially at the offensive tackle and at the receiver position. There weren't a lot of surprises, Ramon. Oh well, Atlanta. <laughs> well, I was gonna get. I was gonna get to that, but I'm. I'm, I'm but gonna get o- over it. <laughs> but overall, I mean, there were just two trades in yeah. the first. You know, we heard oh, oh yeah, three, there you go. Threes trading and fours trading and fives oh. trading and the Titans are trading down. I, I did something on social media on Thursday morning, trying to throw out the fact that I didn't think Minnesota was going up to four because I didn't think that they had what it took. You know, in studying the fact that they didn't have draft picks, well, they moved up one spot to take J.J. McCarthy, and then they moved up six spots to take Dallas Turner, and now they don't have a two, a three, or a four next year. Minnesota's got to be happy with what they have. Other than that, in the first 17 picks, in the first 20, as a matter of fact, no trades. Well, and Mike, to your point, getting to another team that didn't have the capital to move up and needed a quarterback is the Denver Broncos at 12. And you heard rumors that they were going to have to offer this and that and, you know, Patrick Sertan at cornerback. So they took the next guy on oh, their Nicks. board that was, you know, right there, 61 career starts, the most of any of these guys because he's played 18 million years in, you know, Division <laughs> One football. Well, he's like 38. Yeah, he is. He's the oldest rookie. No, I, I like Bo Nix, but, I mean, is he, is he the 12th pick? It just goes to what you talk about, Coach. There's the draft and then there's the quarterback yep. draft. And the, 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 the example of that was never more glaring than what we just went through here in the Wesley Mortgage Club. You, you saw it. You knew it. You saw it. And, as I say, if you don't have one, you're going to do what it takes to go get one, regardless, regardless of what anybody else thinks. It, to, to me, I think Bo Nix fits exactly what Sean Payton want. You look at Bo Nix, he's Drew Brees Jr. almost in a sense. You look at the quarterbacks. But, but that, is he? Uh, but, but my <laughs> thing is, like, the mold that you put him in. I mean, in. like, so many of his passes six, were under 10 yards. 6'2 guy, move side to side. Sean Payton, of course, probably I mean, lives Zach, in a world Zach where he Wilson thinks that. may have more of the – talents yeah I, I i can see that but when you look at your guy that you can get for cheap and zach wilson's there for competition's sake i live that life that sean payton is going to do whatever he can to try to prove that he can repeat a drew Brees. I but think- they they couldn't go up because they're still hurt by the russell wilson trade. ah then it's there yep. it, they're still eating that financially and otherwise you were to say well i think some of this was need based obviously the things that we saw early in this draft i mean Everybody knew that there were going to be a couple quarterbacks going off early because these teams do not have quarterbacks. So Chicago needed one. Washington needed one. The Patriots needed one. That all made sense. Where things changed a little bit, I think that some of it was 
the guys that you can't pass up. Some of it was need, and some of it was financial, which I didn't think about until as the draft started to go on. And I don't know the cap situation this year or in the years to come for most of these teams off the top of my head. But I can imagine, given the nature of some of these moves, there was a cost factor in that, hey, these guys could be on rookie contracts. Hey, we're going to have big name players that we're going to have to pay. It seems that there were but financial motivators may be different than in previous years. Are, are we are we also looking at a world in the NFL right now currently where defense does still matter, but to keep you in games and above board and save jobs, you got to go get offensive guys because that 14 straight is very eye-opening to me. And, of course, you throw the quarterbacks in it, but in today's world of, of score, seven on seven, no, not it. going under the yeah. center – Right? That's it. And, and, I mean, the picks that went in the first 14, it was six quarterbacks. It was four wide receivers. Or was it four tackles? I can't remember. I'll have to look at my sheet to to One, know, to know that again. Um, but the bottom line was it was outside players. You know, it was the quarterbacks and it was outside players. The game is outside in now instead of inside out. Well, uh, here's the other thing too, Mike. And again, you know, the, the Rhett and my board's not the end all to be all, but it's pretty spot on. I'll just say that right here. <laughs> it's just right. It's just right. I mean, <laughs> we're we're exactly right. I hate to say that. Uh, I won't say it more. The OT people love you, Coach. You can say whatever you want. To <laughs> I, I won't say it more than twelve <laughs> times by the time this thing's over with, because we're 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 dinging them off. But there's no running backs in the in the first round. There okay, so let's are none. Let's move to tomorrow night. Starting with pick 33, you know, it's, it's not a great running back year, as no. we know. It's not a great interior defensive lineman year. No. It's not a good linebacker year. Off-ball linebacker. Off-ball yeah. linebackers. Correct. Um, it's not a good safety year. It's not a good safety year. It, it's not a fabulous tight end year after Bowers. Nope. So, do people in that top area of the second round – grab up the best of a certain position because if they wait another 30 picks, that guy may be gone and then they can't get what they need in round four. That's exactly how uh, draft rooms are thinking right now. You know, it used to be you'd reset your draft. Remember when the first three rounds were on the first day mm-hmm. and then the second day was round four? Well, now you got to reset after 32 picks. So that's exactly what all of these rooms are doing right now, Mike. And they're going to meet, they will meet early in the morning too to start resetting, doing just what you're saying. This is the point of time as to where your horizontal board comes into play big time. Well, barring, big time. Barring a trade, this is exactly what the Titans are going to go through because, yes, they have 38, but they have nothing at three currently, and it's a long way to get to four. So, yeah, there's some there's some figuring some things out going on. Yeah, and I don't think they're going to have a three unless they were to trade back in to the end of the third round. Mm-hmm. And they'd probably have to have some more capital to do that. So, Amy Wells, we did not think it was likely that the Titans would trade down at seven. And they didn't. Mm-mm. Is it more likely that they try to jog down from 38 somewhere, maybe try to grab an extra four, so they could have two fours, or they would have at least one more chess piece to potentially move up to like 90-whatever and grab a player at the end of the third round. I definitely think it's compelling, and I think uh, I could see it. I could see it happening. I don't think it would be something bananas where they traded super far back. But, yeah, if there was someone who was willing to trade and give them a couple more picks a little bit later in the fourth round, something like that, yeah, I could see that happening. Everybody's thinking the same. What You've got to have somebody that wants to come up for somebody. And that's the thing. That's you need it. A partner. You're not going to call and say, hey, do you want to come up? Right. You've got to have somebody call you that said, we've got a guy here. Would you be willing? You know, would you be willing to? That's, that's the, the key to this thing. And what we're talking about, the mindset in all of these draft rooms, I mean, as well as we know what's going on as far as the number of players that are available – you know that draft rooms are even more aware of that. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. Well done, Amy Wells. Thank you. And well done by our crew. And look forward to seeing you all 6 o'clock Friday night. 
Central Time for more Titans radio coverage. You can follow us on the 104.5 The Zone app if uh, your Titans radio station in your area is not carrying it. We understand because there's SEC baseball and lots of high school baseball and other things going on right now. So tune in to the 104.5 The app. It doesn't cost anything to download it and have a chance to listen to us. We'll be joined on Friday night as we go 6 to 9 by Brent Hubbs of VolQuest.com. For Ramon Foster, Coach Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryan, and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for listening to the OTP. Welcome to-